Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Uh, today I wanted to review the Technifiber 305 gram TF40. This is the 1619 version. There used to be only an 1820 version. I hope to review that at a later date. And now there's a 315 gram 1619 and there's a 305 gram 1619 and the 305 gram 1820. Uh, so the more open pattern is supposed to help you a little bit with, with spin potential, you got more spin and a little bit higher lift over the net, over the 1820 version. Uh, the TF40 when it came out uh, a few years ago was just a brilliant racket. I reviewed it really highly. I recommended it to a lot of players in my consultations. Many players switched to it happily. Uh, you know, Tennis Warehouse playtester Chris Edwards is pretty, pretty much a legend in the tennis testing game. He, he's still playing with it, I think, as his main racket. So. Uh, this is a, a very, very nice frame. What's new with this one? That's the big question. Well, let's start with the cosmetics, the design. What they've done here is that they, you know, made it even cleaner as a frame. It's, it's more kind of predominantly white, but they have some pretty, you know, aggressive font uh, here and up here. Some people don't like the font. I don't, I'm not bothered by it. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool. It actually, you can feel some Technifiber uh, brand patterns on. So it's pretty nice that in that sense, uh, a little bit what of blue and red here. For me, Technifiber frames uh, most often look amazing. Uh, so I think this is no real exception. I really like this, uh, this design. When it comes to the mold, uh, they've re-engineered the beam slightly. Uh, so this one actually feels faster. It's called, RS sharp section. I don't know how they always come up with these names, but you know that they have this RS technology now for the T-Fight line and now this is for the TF40 line. That's usually how tennis companies do it. They, they find a technology that they can use for their, their entire um, racket uh, lineup. So they have different categories of rackets or silos uh, and they, they use that technology for each category or silo or series, whatever you want to call it. So now this um, RS is coming to the TF40 and it does feel like the, um, the profile makes the racket feel slimmer. Uh, don't, not sure you know, if it's playing with my head, but it feels like a little bit faster. So the RS beam thing actually seems to, to be a, an improvement in my opinion. My only real knock of the previous TF40 was that it sometimes felt like a little bit clunky uh, for a control frame, a little bit you know, towards a pure strike, which is more of an attacking power power control frame uh, but this one this one feels faster so they they slimmed it up a bit overall in specs besides the 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 more you know open string pattern that they've introduced uh, it's very very similar it's pretty much the same uh, i also want to add that they have foam filling inside uh, the racket for some dampening and that's something they do for a lot of their rackets and i think that's a good idea some brands use foam filling uh, to kind of dampen some response get a little bit more stability and comfort uh, you can have maybe a little bit less of a direct feel and feedback from the dampening, but overall it's, it's generally a good idea. And gel, diadem, uh, technofiber, uh, several brands use this, uh, so it's pretty common. Uh, specs, like I said, not changed much. Um, 98 square inches, 27 inch length, 305 grams, so you add strings, that's about 15 grams extra, a little bit more, uh, depending on the thickness of the string. Um, three points headlights, so this is a pretty head heavy. It's not head heavy in balance total, but it, it's a definitely more you know towards the head than many other control rackets. So um, it's almost like even balanced, as you can see here. It, it does have more more weight in the head for more stability, despite its low weight. Swing weight uh, maneuverable, 321. I think that's a pretty spot on swing weight for this type of frame. I, I personally like a little bit higher. Uh, I can add two, three grams to the head. I'm gonna bump the swing weight up 10 points to around 330. That's more my, uh, my liking. And maybe I have to then counter uh, weigh the handle a little bit so it's not like even balanced. Cause I, I think when, when you get towards even balance, the maneuverability of the frame uh, might suffer. Beam width is 22 millimeter. Uh, fans of the 6195, uh, that's, that's spot on that beam. With the construction is Dynacore XTC and pure graphite, stiffness around 64, and that's with strings, so it's, it's a little bit higher unstrung, around 67. Uh, but nice, um, fast response, uh, very plush and on impact. It's the, the foam and, and the medium stiffness, I think. Feels like an excellent advanced player frame. 
I would definitely say, you know, in terms of playing level, definitely advanced 4.0 NTRP. So the NTRP is a scale of one to seven, where, you know, advanced is from 4.5 and upwards. And I would say this player, this racket can be used from 4.0 and upwards. Um, you can always customize if you want a bit heavier, but I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone below 4.0 because it's going to be difficult to generate pace. Uh, so you know that. I'm trying to give you more player ratings in my reviews so you have an idea. Playing styles, well, it's oral court player who like to play with touch, control, feel. It's all about that. Uh, you have to generate your own power. So it's not for you who who is going to be maybe always um, attacking from the baseline. You're not going to get a lot for free. But if you like to either defend and get pinpoint passing shots, or play more aggressive where you actually move towards the net. It has a really nice feel at the net, then this is your racket. But you're not getting anything extra on serves, ground strokes. Uh, you need to really give uh, the power yourself. Uh, nice on the slice, I mean, with the beam, cuts through the air, a very, very good frame for the slice and volleys. So you old school guys who like a little bit more of a control frame, uh, this one is definitely one that, that takes them into more of the modern area, but not too much, still has that plush, nice feel. Uh, competitors to this one, uh, Radical MP, I would say that's slightly stiffer, Wilson Blade 98, 1619, those are probably the closest ones. The, this one has a little bit, a little bit more power than the Blade in my opinion. And the Dunlop CX200 is also quite close in feel and power to this, but I feel like this one is a little bit nicer on impact perhaps, but uh, those are good, good sticks and good com comparisons. Uh, I really hope to try the 1820. Uh, I like that it's 16-19 in a way that you get a little bit more lift, but for that pinpoint flat shot precision, I personally like an 18-20 pattern. That's why I've been using the Prestige and, and these types of frames for a long time. Uh, but for some players, a 16-19 will help you get a little bit more height of the net, so you're not clipping the net uh, with maybe a flatter stroke. Uh, also for topspin players, they will get a little bit more help uh, to hit the bigger targets. So um, I think it's a good idea to do a 16-19. Uh, the beam profile is so different that it doesn't really resemble the RS um, or the Iga Shriontech racket to 9.8 T rebound. So those are more powerful, more uh, spin oriented. This one is more for you, a kind of traditional players who like touch, feel, volley style tennis. Not easy to use, as I said, you need to be quite advanced to really benefit and, and maximize the potential of this frame. But if you're an advanced player, uh, you're gonna feel very connected, like a very nice uh, racket very subtle update over the previous version uh, you can probably buy that one and be happy with the lower price point they have on, on most sites like tennis warehouse europe i think they had a really good discount even tennis warehouse probably uh, on on the previous version the new one did feel a bit faster to me a bit more refined in how it you know flew through the air uh, and i i did struggle sometimes that the, the old one felt a bit clunky uh, that was that was to me, uh, but but yeah, still a great racket. TF40, uh, decent update. Did did improve the the I think the construction a little bit, and it's it's still one of the best control rackets on the market. Really really like this one. I did string it with Grapple Snake Tour M8. Uh, it's become one of my favorite strings. Uh, 130 gauge. So I tried to string them a little bit lower, but for this one I strung it around 49 pounds, 22 kilos. Uh, and I, I did really like the, the pairing of the string and the racket. I'm gonna try it with other strings as well. And if there's anything to say about that, I will update the review, but, but I know pretty much how this string plays and I know how this racket plays. And I definitely give it a thumbs up. It's Tennis Nerd approved, uh, this update of the TF40. One of the best modern control rackets on the market still. Uh, if you wanna buy this one, please do so through my affiliate links. The, the links are in the description below. They go to Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe and Tennis Only. Uh, so uh, I get a small commission if you buy through my links and that helps the site stay alive. I also have other affiliates there. And if you want to get the reviews ahead of everyone else, you go to patreon.com slash tennis nerd, where you get kind of tennis nerd unfiltered and some insider info and stuff. I really appreciate your support there. That's about it for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.
Oh, the creepy one.